welcome to another video of health facts with dr danish this video is a recap or summary of my previous videos regarding five different supplements which are considered very helpful in prevention treatment and even reducing the length of the stay in icu in patients with covid19 infection i will be starting with zinc uh, especially zinc citrate and the zinc ionophores such as quercetin. Increasing the intracellular uh, zinc, we are able to inhibit the uh, RNA polymerase activity of coronavirus. In this next study, you could see that how zinc ionophores could actually increase the intracellular zinc and uh, are able to block the coronavirus inside the cells. And this is a recent uh, reliable study. In this study that published in PubMed, a highly reliable database, they showed that zinc inhibits coronavirus and arteriovirus RNA polymerase activity in vitro, and zinc ionophores block the replication of these viruses in cell culture. As you can see in the abstract, increasing the intracellular zinc concentration with zinc ionophores like PT can efficiently impair the replication of a variety of RNA viruses. In this study, they dem demonstrate that the combination of zinc and PT at low concentration inhibits the replication of SARS coronavirus and the equine artery virus in cell culture. National Institute of Health considered 40 mg of zinc a day as an upper limited day for an adult and less than six months, four milligram a day. My recommendation for my patient is to take zinc citrate, 50 milligram per day with the food, uh, along with two milligram of copper. So we don't have to be worried about uh, depleting copper in our body. In this study that published in PubMed, which is a highly respected database, they showed that uh, quercetin has zinc ionophore activity uh, the same ionophore activity for uh, prescription drug hydroxychloroquine to be able to destroy the uh, coronavirus. In the next slide, I'm going to sh uh, explain uh, the, um, the connection between vitamin D and acute respiratory tract infection. This is an extremely valuable study published in PubMed, uh, which is a highly respected database. Uh, showing that vitamin D supplementation uh, to prevent acute respiratory tract infection uh, was valuable. Uh, it's not just a randomized controlled tr trial, it's a systematic review and meta-analysis, meaning that they actually studied and reviewed 25 eligible randomized controlled trials uh, from different corners of the world. And the eligibility criteria for study selection was randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial of supplementation with vitamin D3 or vitamin D2 uh, of any duration in uh, patients with acute respiratory tract infection. Uh, they studied uh, more than 10,000 people, almost 11,000, and the p-value was less than 0.001 which makes it again extremely valuable. And if you scroll down and you could see the, they concluded the vitamin D supplementation was safe and it protected against acute respiratory tract infection overall. And patients who were very vitamin D deficient and those not receiving bolus doses experienced the most benefit. So those who are not receiving bolus doses. Here is another study showing that vitamin C can shorten the length of stay in the ICU. And it, this is a meta-analysis. Meta-analysis uh, is a lot more reliable than any other studies. So as you know, RCT is randomized control trial, uh, which is reliable per se. But the uh, when we actually uh, studying multiple uh, RCTs is actually a, a lot more reliable. The result is going to be a lot more reliable. So in six trials orally, 
um, administered vitamin C in doses of 1 to 3 grams per day reduced the length of ICU stay by 8.6% and the p-value is 0 0.003 which is very low that means very very reliable study in three trials in which patients needed mechanical ventilation for over 24 hours vitamin c shortened the duration of mechanical ventilation by 18.2 percent and the p-value again is very low that means uh, this is a very reliable study as well uh, in this other study uh, it shows that vitamin c in Fusion for the treatment of uh, COVID-19 infected pneumonia uh, is was really helpful. It has been done in on March 10, 2020. Uh, as you can see, it says that when sepsis happens, the cytokine surge caused by the sepsis is activated, and neutrophils in the lungs accumulated in the lungs, destroying alveolar capillaries. Early clinical studies have shown that vitamin C can effectively prevent this process. In addition, vitamin C can help to eliminate alveolar fluid by preventing the activation and accumulation of neutrophils and reducing alveolar epithelial water channel damage. The most important role of cysteine in our body is that it's a precursor uh, to make the most potent antioxidant in our body, which is glutathione. So it's very important for us to supplement with uh, N-acetylcysteine or NAC. Another great benefit of uh, NAC is uh, to help with the immune system. It's actually improving immune system. And the other one is uh, to repair the oxidative uh, stress and cell damages in our body. In this next study, which is a randomized placebo-controlled trial, you'll see how effective NAC would be in the number and the severity of symptoms in patients with flu. This is a study published in PubMed, which is again a highly respected database, and they studied the attenuation of influenza-like symptomatology and improvement of cell-mediated immunity with long-term N-acetylcysteine treatment. As you can see, N-acetylcysteine has been in clinical use for more than 30 years as a mucolytic drug. It has also been proposed for and or used in the therapy and prevention of several respiratory disease and of diseases involving an oxidative stress in general. A total of 262 subjects of both sexes were enrolled in this study. They were randomized to receive either placebo or NAC tablets, 600 mg twice daily for six months, which is quite a long time. Patients suffering from chronic respiratory disease were not eligible to avoid possible confounding by an effect of NAC on respiratory symptoms. They concluded that NAC treatment was well tolerated and resulted in a significant decrease in the frequency of influenza-like episodes severity and length of time confined to bed. Both local and systemic symptoms were sharply and significantly reduced in the NAC group. Another interesting fact is that only 25% of virus-infected subjects under NAC treatment develop a symptomatic form versus 79% in placebo group. In other words, 79% of patients in placebo group uh, develop some sort of symptoms, flu-like symptoms, as opposed to just 25% of virus-infected people in NAC group. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like this video and find it beneficial, please share it in your social media and uh, to your friend and families, and uh, like always, stay happy and healthy. Thanks and have a great day.